I was hoping you'd catch that. It's a little poofier than I would normally do, but, well, I'm nervous. Well, I'm not too concerned about that. When I go to bed, I wrap my entire head with toilet tissue, so it usually gets a little smushed down anyway in that process. In my class at the trade school, I was number one in frosting and streaking. I did my own. Oh, really? I wouldn't have known. And I can spot a bottle job at 20 paces. Well, your technique is good. And your form and content will improve with experience. So, you're hired. Oh! And not a moment too soon. This morning we're going to be as busy as a one-armed paper hanger. Oh, thank you, Miss Trevi. Thank now, you. Now, no time. You know where the coffee stuff is. Everything else is on a tray next to the stove. Here, let me help you. You've got tiny little hairs and fuzzies all over you. Honey, there's so much static electricity in here, I pick up everything except boys and money. Now, be a treasure. And L. This is the most successful shop in town. You want to know why? Why? Because I have a strict philosophy that I have stuck to for 15 years. There is no such thing as natural beauty. That's why I've never lost a client to the cut and curl of the beauty box. And remember, my ladies get <coughs> only the best. Do not scrimp on anything. Feel free to use as much hairspray as you want. Now, uh, just shove that stuff to one side. It goes right there. Manicure station here. There's no such thing as natural beauty. Remember that or we're all out of a job. Just look at me, Annel. It takes some effort to look like this. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> How many ladies do we have this morning? Well, on Saturday mornings, I restrict myself to the ladies of the neighborhood. Normally, that would be just three. But today, we have Shelby Eatonton. She's not a regular. She's the daughter of a regular. I have to do something special with her hair. She's getting married this afternoon. Now, how long have you been here in town? Not too long. New in town? Must be exciting being in a new place. I wouldn't know. I've lived here all my life. It's a little scary. I can imagine. Well, tell me things about yourself. There's nothing to tell. I live here. I have a job now. Can I borrow some of these back issues of Southern hair? Oh, sure. It is essential to be keep abreast of the latest styles. I'm glad to see your interest. I get Glamour, Family Circle, Mademoiselle, Ladies Home Journal, every magazine known to man. Now, you must live nearby. I, I mean, within walking distance. I didn't see a car. Car? I don't have a car. I've been staying across the river at Robeline Fording House. Well, that's quite a walk. Ruth Robeline. Now, there's a story. She's a twisted, troubled soul. Her life has been an experiment in terror. Husband killed in World War II. Her son was killed in Vietnam. I have to tell you, when it comes to suffering, she's right up there with Elizabeth Taylor. I had no idea. <clears throat> is that a gunshot? Oh, yes, dear, I believe it is. But why is somebody firing a gun in a nice neighborhood like this? <clears throat> It's a long story. It has to do with Shelby's wedding and her father. You'll be happier if you just ignore it like the rest of the neighborhood. Knock, knock. Morning, Clarice. Morning, Truby. I tried to call you, tell you I was running late. No answer. Oh, I've been over at the high school. I've been out since the crack of dawn. Annel, I want you to meet the former first lady of Chinkapin, Mrs. Belcher. Clary, this is Annel. She's taking Judy's place. Pleased to meet you. I'm a little embarrassed. If I'd known I was going to be meeting new people, I would have taken a little bit more pride in my appearance. <laughs> I've been over at the dedication of the new high school football stadium. I'm usually not this window. Annel, they named the stadium after her late husband, Lloyd Belcher Memorial Coliseum. The team has voted her all sorts of special titles. And I got the pom-poms to prove it. What's your name, honey? My married name's Dupuy. I don't believe I know any Dupuy. I'm not from here. I'm originally from Zwali. Well, that explains it. Truby, I thought I brought those recipes. Oh, Clary, the reason I called is, do you mind if I do Shelby first? Oh, no, that's fine. I'll amuse myself at Shelby's big day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Man, I'll swan it. I think the situation's worse than ever. And now, we're going to need more towels. They're stacked up next to the washing machine. Sweet girl, where'd you find her? She heard I had a position open and she just walked in. I think there's a story here. Yeah, what makes you say that? 
For starters, she's married, but she lives at Ruth Robelin's alone. Mm. I believe I'd get to the bottom of that if I were you. You might have some silverware you'd like to keep. Oh, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> She's very nice. I just love the idea of hiring someone with a past. She can't be more than 18. She hasn't had time to have a past. Honey, it's the 80s. If you can achieve puberty, you can achieve a past. <laughs> yeah. Yuck! you make this coffee? Like you said, I poured the hot water through the thingy. Where'd you get the water? It was boiling on the stove. Did you notice the hot dogs in the bottom of the pot? No. <laughs> make some more, please. I'm so sorry. Oh, honey, that's fine. I love a good hot dog, just not with cream and sugar. <laughs> She's probably not an international spy, but if she works out, I may let her rent the garage apartment. I thought the twins were going to stay there while they go to college. Recent developments. Louie's going away to LSU now, and Poot has decided to work for my cousin in Baltimore. He doesn't want to be called Poot anymore. <laughs> I can't. My babies are growing up. I can't believe your kids are old enough to leave the nest. Well, you know I was a child bride. <laughs> well, I look on the bright side. I have places to visit now. I've always wanted to go to Baltimore. I'm told it's the hairdo capital of the world. Hey, uh, Truby, I found those recipes. I'm so fat I couldn't even feel them. Oh, <laughs> let me see. Mmm, this looks delicious. It is, and the Bisquick makes it so simple. Now this one, this one's from my daughter-in-law. She says you cannot attend a function in Tickfall where that is not so. Oh, yum. Well, are these chocolate chips semi-sweet or milk? Milk. Is the Cairo syrup light or dark? Matter of taste. Where's that other one you were telling me about? Cuppa, cuppa, cuppa. Oh, honey, that's so simple. You don't even need to write it down. Cup of flour, cup of sugar, cup of fruit cocktail with the juice, stir and bake at 350 till gold and bubbly. Sounds awfully rich. It is. That's why I serve it over the ice cream to cut the sweetness. <laughs> Give me some paper and I'll copy those down for you. Oh, um, Ann L., would you get Miss Clarice some paper? I believe there's some stuck on the Frigidaire under the crawfish. Oh, and here's that article on Princess Di. Sometimes I wonder if Drum Eatington's brain gets enough oxygen. That is so annoying. You should try living next door to <laughs> Hi, everybody. There she is. There's my girl. Come break my neck. It would be so good to see you. Good morning, Miss Clary. It's not that I'm unfriendly. I'm just worried about my nails. What a pretty color. I hope it doesn't dry too dark. If it's too dark, it'll never do. And you know the colors are never the same on the bottle. You will always find that to be true. This is drying way too dark. Practically pink my foot. Trivia, do you have any of those nail polish remover things? Oh, here. Where's your mama? Right behind me, I thought. Hi, I'm Shelby Eatonton, soon to be Latchery. Hi, I'm Anel. I'm new. Today's Anel's first day. Well, Anel, you're working for the best. Anyone and somebody gets their hair done at Trivia. Oh, absolutely. Now, Shelby, you know I would walk on my lips to avoid criticizing anyone, but your father's about to make us all pull our hair out. Well, he should be done with his yard work soon. Well, I hope so. You're not the only one concerned. Mama is about to have a fit. She and Daddy are fighting like cats and dogs. Oh, they're just anxious with so much to do. They are not. They just try to create as much tension as possible in any given situation. It's a creed they live by. <laughs> you know, I was just reading an article in Glamour about tension during family occasions. It seems there can be a lot of stress and trauma. The thing that interested me most was that stressful times can unleash deep, dark hostilities that make your hair fall out. They are fighting about patio furniture. Mm -hmm. Jax and I will never fight about silly things. Are you married to now? I hope that coffee's better. Smells right. Oh, how pretty. A Princess Grace. Did you bring the picture of the hairdo like I am? And here's the baby's <gasps> bread. Oh, this is so exciting. I feel like I am present at the creation. <laughs> There's something so wondrous about the way a bride looks. I think it is beauty in its purest form. Now, where are you going to put this stuff? There's no baby's breath in the picture. Oh, you just stick it in. It's meant to frame my face. Baby's breath is part of my whole decoration concept for a total romantic look. Miss Clary, what cute shoes. You think so? I can't decide. I'm afraid they're a little too racy. I'll probably end up giving them away. Oh, 
those are two cha cha for words. If you decide to get rid of them, I'll buy it from you. What size do you wear? Well, in a good shoe, I wear a size six. But sevens feel so good, I buy a size eight. <laughs> They're eight and a half. Perfect. Hi, Mama. Look at Miss Clary's shoes. Uh, 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 they're mine. Is this a riddle? Uh, no, this is my mama. How are things at the house? Fine. Weezer Food Road dropped by just this second to talk to your father. One or both of them is probably lying in a pool of blood by now. Hmm. Did you say a Nell? That's a pretty name. It's unusual. I'm a Lynn. How's the mother of the bride? Don't ask. What's the matter? Nothing a handful of prescription drugs wouldn't take care of. Here, let me take this for you. Thank you. Just put it over there, please. And now, why don't you go on and shampoo Ms. Eatonton? These girls have mountains to move today. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Her coiffure card's right on top. Oh, piece of cake. Mama, this color was all wrong. It looks like a stuck pig bled all over my hands. I'm sure I have something at the house that'll do. But do you have pink? Of course I have pink. Well, it has to be delicate. If I don't have something, we'll send one of the boys out to get you some delicate pink nail polish. Great idea, Mama. I'd love to see what Tommy would bring back. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I can do to help last minute. Oh, you've done plenty, Clary. I think we're about situated. We've just finished borrowing every fern in North Louisiana. The boys got in last night. They're taking care of the odds and ends. I hope the rain holds off. I'm sorry it's not a prettier day. Oh, this is perfect weather for me. I don't function well when it's hot. And I love cloudy days. On cloudy days, I feel like God's not trying very hard, so I don't have to either. <laughs> she does sweat profusely. Thank you, Mama. Heat never bothers me. I love it. But spicy foods make me sweat, especially on the top of my head. My hair gets wet. <laughs> oh, I'll bet that's oh. for me. It is probably my mind trying to locate my body. <laughs> Hello? Yes, sir, she is. Just a minute. Malin, it's your husband. Thanks, Clary. Hello, Drone. I don't have it. I haven't got it. I don't have it. Drum, if you are trying to drive me crazy, you're too late. For the last time, I don't have it. Ask the boys. Goodbye. What did Daddy want? Oh, nothing. Um, Shelby, so we're going to sweep it up and leave some softness around your ears? Sweep it up? Yes, Mama, up like Princess Grace. Did you bring Truby the picture of Jacqueline Smith? No, Mama, I brought Truby the picture of Princess Grace. I destroyed the picture of Jacqueline Smith. I thought I made you see the advantages of the Jacqueline Smith hair, No, Mama. At least I taught her that stupid idea of putting all that baby's breath in her hair. <laughs> Go put your head in the sink, please. Oh, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I find cold water refreshing. It just startled me, that's all. Truby, can I borrow your recipe for strawberry pie? Oh, sure. Now, Shelby, your mother doesn't tell us much. What's Jackson like? Oh, he's swell. I thought he was a pest at first, but then he kind of grew on me, and now I love him. Mm, where'd you meet him? At a party at the Petroleum Club in Shreveport. I was getting a kick out of watching him on the dance floor. <laughs> it was painfully obvious he had never taken the time to dance in front of a mirror. And there was something so attractive about how stupid he looked. <laughs> well, is he real romantic? No, but he does bring me flowers and little presents if I bug him enough. And he's promised to give me a red rose on every anniversary corresponding to the number of that anniversary. I think that's so sweet. Well, now, that's a pretty romantic idea, isn't it? Yes. I wish it had been his. <laughs> Look... <clears throat> Lloyd and I missed 40 years by three months. That stinker, bless his heart. He tried, he just couldn't make it. Do you remember your wedding? Of course, every detail from the flowers to the food. Weezer was my maid of honor. Shelby, I hope you and Jackson will be as happy as Lloyd and I were. We had such a good time. Till last November, at least he held on through the state playoffs. Miss Clary, there are still good times to be had. Oh, I know, I just missed the whirlwind of being the mayor's wife. It's not easy being one. I really don't like to go places by myself. If I go with the couple, I'm a third wheel. If I go with a friend, we're a couple of old biddies. Well, someone like you should be able to find something to do. Well, I do love football, but it's hard to parlay that into a reason for living. <laughs> Bless your space facts, Clary. You're a woman coming to terms with her grips. You and I are in the same boat. My kids are leaving town, and I got a husband who hadn't moved from in front of the TV set in 15 years. <laughs> It's up to us to figure out what we were doing on this earth. Now, that's today's sermon. So, Shelby, are you and Jackson going to live in Monroe, um, West Monroe, or Monroe proper? Oh, Monroe, of course. Law practice is there. Shelby, you are so lucky to be marrying a Louisiana lawyer. They do well whether they want to or not. Oh, I don't really care. 
Don't get me wrong, the money's real nice. But I just like the idea of growing old with somebody. My dream is to get old and sit on the back porch covered in grandchildren and say things like, no, and stop that. Oh. Are you going to quit nursing? Never. I love it. I love being around all those babies. Just last week, we had this poor little fella, two and a half months premature. He looked like a big rat. But I just kept holding him and talking to him, and I knew he wasn't going to make it. Oh, that's so sad. It happens all the time. Drummond, I feel Shelby should not continue to work after she's married. I'm so anxious to discuss this topic for the 900th time this week. Shelby, you should not be on your feet all day. You should be kinder to your circulatory system. Anel, I know you're new and all, but don't let that stop you. Anytime you have something to say, just let her rip. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> well, Melinda, you look like you're ready to roll. I think we can trust Anel to roll you up, don't you? Oh. You think you can roll up Miss Eaton to Nanel? Oh, I don't know. Today's a very special day, and my work tends to be poofy when I'm too nervous. Does your dress have to go over your head? You can't screw up Mama's hair. You just tease it and make it look like a brown football helmet. I am, <laughs> I am certain I missed the passage in Emily Post that said all abuse must be heaped on the mother of the bride. Go ahead, Nanel. I'm sure you'll do a beautiful job. Doesn't really matter what I look like anyway. Now, hush, girls. Shelby, tell me things about the wedding. How many bridesmaids? Nine. Good Lord. Exactly. <laughs> I hope that photographer brings a wide-angle lens. I think it's embarrassing and awful, but Mama had me, made me have my cousins and Margie St. Maurice. Shelby, there was no way around it, and you know it. It will be pretentious, and Daddy always says an ounce of pretension is worth a pound of manure. <laughs> The Poet Laureate of Dogwood Lane. Mama, I wish you would get off Daddy's back. He gets enough hassle from his Weezer. What are your colors, Shelby? Blush and bashful. <laughs> Her colors are pink and pink. Blush and bashful. I ask you, how precious can this wedding get? Truby, my colors are blush and bashful. I've chosen two shades of pink, and one is much deeper than the other. The bridesmaids' dresses are beautiful. And the ceremony will be, too. All the walls are banked with sprays of fresh flowers, and there's a pink carpet specially laid for the service, and pink silk bunting draped over anything that would stand still. That sanctuary is going to look like it was hosed down with Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> I like pink. I tried to talk her into using peaches and cream. Now, that would be lovely at this time of year. All the azaleas in the yard are peach-colored, and peach is so flattering to every skin tone. No way. Pink is my signature color. Well, what color is your dress, Malin? Peach and cream. <laughs> Clary? Beige lace to the knee. Well, Shelby, I am wearing a sexy blue chiffon. Jackson's going to take one look at me and leave you behind in the dust. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mama's dress is gorgeous. It cost more than my wedding dress. It did not. It was on sale. That's what she told Daddy. What she really meant was that it was for sale and not on sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get it. For sale, not on sale. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Janice. Yes, I heard. I know it's an emergency, but today I'm dealing with Shelby. <laughs> but, but tomorrow's Sunday. <laughs> sure, fine. Come by after church. Truby, you shouldn't give up your Sundays. Well, you know how neurotic Janice Van Meter is about her appearance. Janice is the current mayor's wife. We hate her. <laughs> so, Shelby, fill me in on the reception. Well, there are going to be ferns and twinkly lights and magnolias in the pool. Oh, I hope your father didn't get any magnolias from Weezer's side of the tree. We will never hear the end of it. And the wedding cake is going to be by the pool, and the groom's cake will be hidden in the carpool. <laughs> Shelby and I agree on one thing. The groom's cake. It's, it's awful. awful. <laughs> it's in the shape of a giant armadillo. An armadillo? <laughs> Jackson wanted a cake in the shape of an armadillo. He has an aunt that makes them. That's unusual. It's repulsive. It has gray icing, Clary. I can't even think of how you make gray icing. Well, worse. The cake pot is red velvet cake. Blood red. People are going to be hacking into this animal that looks like it's bleeding to death. <laughs> now, the rehearsal supper, that was an experience. It wasn't that bad. It was down at Jackson's uncle's place on the river. They served steak and baked potatoes. They went to a lot of trouble. Jackson's family loved to barbecue. For dessert, they served an original creation called Dago Pie. Jackson's from a good old Southern family with good old Southern values. You either shoot it, stuff it, or marry it. 
They are simply outdoorsy, that's all. Well, did you two do anything especially romantic? We drove down to Frenchman's Point and went parking. Shelby. <laughs> oh boy, the romantic part. This is what really melts my butter. Then we went skinny dipping and did things that frighten the fish. Shelby, really? It's been a long time since we had a youngster around here, hadn't it? And we talked and talked and oh, talked. Oh, I love those kinds of talks in the arms of the man you love. Well, I actually fought most of the time. What? Because I told him I couldn't marry him. What? Why would you go and do a thing like that? Oh, it's okay. We worked it all out. So it's just one of those last minute jitter things. No, but the wedding's still on. Well, thank goodness, because this is going to be in the Hairdo Hall of Fame. You scared us, Shelby. That wasn't a nice thing to do to your mother. And you should never say something like that to a woman who's marinating 50 pounds of crab claws. <laughs> Making up can be extremely romantic. I'm jealous. I miss romance so much. Oh, Trivia, it can't be all that bad. The last romantic thing my husband did was in 1972 when he enclosed this carport so I could support him. <laughs> <laughs> and Elle, very nice. I think you know what you're doing. Thank you. Mrs. Eatonton, you have lovely hair, and your scout's as clean as a whistle. I try. Must run in the family. Shelby, you have such pretty hair, so thick. Hold your head up, darling. Stop it. Shelby, Shelby, Milan. Oh, honey. I'll get the juice. Trudy, there's some candy in my purse. I got a peppermint right here. Shelby, we're getting you some juice, honey. Should I get our cookie? Here's the juice. Shelby, you need some juice. Leave me alone. Drink, honey, drink some juice. Drink the juice, honey. No. Who can blame her? Juice after a peppermint? Don't put my mouth in my purse. You didn't bring your purse, honey. Here, have another sip. No. It's no wonder with all this wedding nonsense and running around. Can I do something? Should I call a doctor? No, no. She's diabetic. She's just got a little too much insulin, that's all. She'll be fine if we can get something in her. Here, Shelby, have another sip. I'm gonna leave if you don't leave me alone. I would love to see you try. Shelby, cooperate, drink. Drink, honey, please. There you go, that's a start. That one hit her quick. I know, she's on the pill now and her hormones are running wild. She'll get on an even keel pretty soon. She could hurt herself, Malin. What if this happened when she was driving a car? Perhaps that explains why I have so much gray hair. But you've known Shelby as long as I have. You know I have to let her be strong. She doesn't seem to be down too deep. Say something, Shelby. No. That's good enough. <laughs> She has been so upset lately. She and Jackson have been going round and round. Dr. Michaud told her at her last appointment that children are not possible. It's not the easiest thing in the world to sit there and watch your child's heart break. Don't talk about me like I'm not here. She's starting to make some sense. This one is not bad at all, but I think we're gonna have a little more juice. Should I do anything? Can I call anybody? No, no, she'll be fine in just a minute. She probably won't remember anything. Don't make a fuss over her, though. Normality is very important to Shelby. I'm sorry to hear about the children part, Malia. I know. She thinks Jackson might be throwing away his chance for children. They've discussed it. He's fine with it. Shelby's the one pushing the issue. He's crazy about her and... He said, shut up, don't be stupid. There are plenty of kids out there who need good homes. We'll adopt 10 of them. We'll buy one if we have to. Jackson sounds like good people to me. I knew right then and there that if he was dumb enough to spend the rest of his life with me, I was dumb enough to marry him. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mom. Get it. Hello? Oh, yeah, hon, just a second. Malin, it's Tommy for Shelby. Shelby, honey, it's Tommy. Shelby, it's Tommy. He wants to know where your car is. Absolutely not. That's the honeymoon getaway car. He just wants to defile it. <laughs> Johnson says he's been buying rubbers by the case. <laughs> She'll have to call you back. Thank you, Mama. Now, sit up straight. I got to gild the lily. So will you be taking it down after the reception? I'll be glad to give you a touch-up before you leave on the honeymoon. I'm gonna leave it up as long as possible. Well, then let me guess where the honeymoon is. I picture tropical, moonlight for days, secluded. Somewhere you can be intimate out of doors. Las Vegas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> the weather's supposed to be nice. I hear it's like living in a blow dryer. Shelby, what Jackson said. Mama, I'd rather not discuss this right now. What happens in my life is between Jackson and me. And I will take care of him, and he will take care of me. You can't blame us for being concerned, honey. 
what Jackson said about children, about adoption. Now that was wonderful and very wise, honey. Not being able to have children is no disgrace. Do you hear me, Shelby? Mama, I know all about adoption, and I also know the limitations of this body of mine. I would never do anything stupid. Well, finally, you're listening to reason. Well, now, Shelby, you're gonna have to start untangling this baby's breath. Oh, no, Shelby. It's my wedding. I'll stick baby's breath up my nose if I want to. She's got enough. <laughs> fine, fine. I'm supposed to be the expert on behavior, yet I can't seem to manage the people in my own family. Mama, did you tell them? Tell us what? It's nothing, really. I might be promoted to administrator of the Mental Guidance Center. Why, that's wonderful. That guidance center does such good work with our disturbed. I wish I'd taken my boys bread when they were little and straightened them out. I should have realized Louie had problems when his imaginary playmates wouldn't play with him. <laughs> Your boys grew up fine. They're just a little scary, that's all. Well, I just think it must be so much fun for Melinda to have access to all that secret personal information. Come on, Melinda, tell us some of your most bizarre mental cases and let us guess who they are. There's a lot of sick tickets in this town. True, B. You know I would never discuss office business in a social setting. People need a place they can come and unload their problems. I would never violate their confidence. Well, Mama says she doesn't talk. She doesn't talk. She's a brick wall. As somebody once said, if you don't have anything nice to say about anybody, come sit by me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize how rude we're being to poor Annette? L. Now, she doesn't know us from Adam's house cat, and yet we sit here and talk about things foreign to her experiences. Tell us about yourself, Anel. There's not much to tell. Well, where do you live? On the corner of Jefferson and Second. Which corner? The one where you can't see the house for the weeds. <laughs> Must be Miss Robeline's house. She's my landlady. How you getting along there? What's the matter with her? Nothing. Nothing. Are you happy? She scares me. She's always watching me, and sometimes I catch her looking through my keyhole. Oh, she must not be taking her medication. I'll check on her on Monday. <laughs> Shelby, why don't you finish that juice? I'm fine, Mama. You finish it. Why don't you drink it? It's going to be a little while you know before the bridesmaids You know what you need in here, Truvy? A radio. Music is such a wonderful thing to have in the background. It takes the pressure off of having to talk so much. <laughs> Well, I used to have one, but I slammed it against the wall when I couldn't figure out where the batteries went. I know now I was a victim of premenstrual syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've gotten four radios as wedding presents. I'll give you one. How sweet. What did I hear? The Antilli family is selling KPPD. I wonder how much radio station sells for these days. A lot, but a small town radio station can be a license to print money if it's run right. Miss Perry, you should buy KPPD. You got plenty of money. What would I do with a radio station? Business had never been my thing. Lloyd took care of all that stuff. Shelby, why don't you finish the juice? Forget the damn juice. Shelby will be fine now. Besides, I always carry mints in my purse, just in case. Oh, well then, take some of the butterscotch in that dish. Just throw it in a bag, Clary. It is the best. It starts out real hard, but after you suck all the coating off, it gets real chewy. My two favorite things, crunchy and chewy and buttery, all in one, delicious. <laughs> well, then you say you always carry candy in your purse. Without fail. Well, tell me this. You suck on this often? Oh! oh. I hate it when people bring weapons into my shop. How did you get Daddy's gun away from him? I waited for my opportunity all morning. He finally put it down to go to the bathroom. I know I'm new here and all, but is my life in danger? <laughs> no, Melinda's husband's just been shooting at some birds. The trees around here are full of them this time of year. You see, my backyard is full of fruit trees. Which are full of birds, and Daddy's been trying to frighten them out by making loud noises. I didn't want the guests at my reception to spend all night dodging bird dew. <laughs> the neighborhood is fit to be tied. Weezer Boudreaux blames my husband for the problems with that mangy dog of hers. She says all that loud noise has made that stupid animal lose its hair. <laughs> Taking the gun was a stroke of genius, Malin. I know. But what if he comes here to get it back? <laughs> Drum would never set foot in a beauty shop. This is women's territory. He probably thinks we all run around naked or something. <laughs> There's somebody coming. A strange lady with a strange dog. That would be Weezer. That's one ugly dog. What kind of dog is it? If Rat had hair, he'd be a collie. Lord, give us strength. <laughs> this is it. I found it, I am in hell. 
morning, Weza. Don't try to get on my good side. I no longer have one. You're a little early. You're not expected till 11-ish. That's precisely why I'm here. <laughs> I have to cancel. I have to take my poor dog to the vet before he has a nervous breakdown. My dog, I mean. The vet's perfectly healthy. <laughs> you must be the new girl. Hi. Would you get me some water? I've been screaming this morning. Wazer, I'm sorry. This got so out of hand. Malin, it's not your fault. You know, I used to think you were crazy for marrying that man. Then for a number of years, I figured you were just a glutton for punishment. Now I realize you must be on some sort of mission from God. <laughs> but I haven't slept for days. I look like a dog's dinner. However, when I woke up this morning, I decided I would rise above it. I would begin anew. Whatever that man has done, I would put aside in honor of your wedding day, Shelby. <laughs> so, I decided to make myself presentable, floss up the house a bit. Such a big day in the neighborhood, somebody might drop by. I go outside to cut some fresh flowers for my living room go down to my magnolia tree, and there's not a bloom on it. Weezer, the judge has not decided whose tree that is exactly. It's mine. Be that as it may, it would not be too much to ask for me to have one blossom to brighten up my home. After all, I'm all alone, except for my dog. Weezer, you need something in your life besides that dumb animal. <laughs> Put a lid on it, Clary. I was standing there looking at my, my naked magnolia tree when I saw Drum across the way loading what appeared to be a cannon. I said, <laughs> Drum, what do you suppose happened to all those magnolia blossoms? He said, well, the wind probably blew the moth during the night. I said, how did the wind manage to blow them off all into your pool? Then he fired at me. Is that rude or what? Weezer, <laughs> those are blanks. And you know Drum would never point a gun at a lady. Oh, he's a perfect gentleman. I'm sure he takes the dishes out of the sink before he pees in it. <laughs> now that's uncalled for. All I know is my poor dog has a condition. He has to be sedated. Are you sure that's entirely true, Miss Weezer? Rhett is a very old dog. I'm simply going on what the vet tells me. Which vet? Whitey Black. Well, that's your first problem. Whitey Black's a moron. I don't think oh. he even has opposable thumbs. Miss Weezer, Daddy is not trying to drive you crazy. He's just trying to make things nice for my reception. His heart's in the right place. But he cannot do this to my poor dog. He's on his last legs. Whatever am I going to do with the poor thing? I got some good recipes here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Darling, would you look out the window and check on my dog while I smack Clary in her smart mouth? I know this is hard to believe, but these are the dearest friends I have in this town. His color's good. His skin's real pink. How oh, cute. Miss Weezer, I know for a fact that there are going to be no more gunshots, so why don't you just relax? Have some coffee. Ladies, this is going to work out beautifully. I'm almost through with Shelby. And now can shampoo Weezer. See, life can be wonderful. Well, if you're sure there are no more gunshots, I'll stay. What's your name? Did you tell me? Anel. Fine. Are you new in town? I know everyone. I don't recall ever seeing you before. I just moved to town not too long ago. With your family? No, I don't have any family to speak of. With your husband? My husband? Uh, well, that's hard to say. I, I don't know. You don't know? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Are you married or not? These are not difficult questions. Well, we're not. He, he's not. That it, I can't talk about it. Of course, course you can. can. <laughs> I don't know if I'm married or not. He's gone. Oh, darling, men are the most horrible creatures. 
Everything's horrible, Bunky. That's my husband. We moved to town a month ago, and he just vanished last week. No idea where. When? No, he took all the money, my jewelry, the car, most of my clothes are in the trunk. There might have been foul play. Have you been to the police? No, but they've been to me. He's in big trouble with the law. Drugs or something. He never paid the rent, so I got thrown out of our house and I had to move in at crazy old Miss Robolines. And the police keep asking me questions and I don't know any answers. And they say that my marriage may not even be legal. Oh, you should have said something. I wanted to, but I needed this job in the worst way. And I didn't know if you'd hire somebody who may or may not be married to somebody who might be a dangerous criminal. But I swear to you that my personal tragedy will not interfere with my ability to do good hair. Of course it won't. I really don't think things can get any worse. Of course they can. <laughs> you are so brave. You must be made of courage. Everything's awful. Checks are bouncing everywhere, and I'm totally alone, and I keep asking myself, why me? Oh, we are awful. We're all hateful, awful people. Here, all we've been talking about are weddings and psychotic animals, and we've been tearing you up inside, haven't we? I can't tell you how sorry I am, and you've had such a terrible time. Sometimes we just don't know how lucky we are. What can we do to help? Well, I know one thing I can do. Tonight, you are gonna come down to my house and have some bleeding armadillo groom's cake. It's gonna be a great party. Oh, I don't know. I still get real emotional sometimes. Oh, I couldn't stand the thought of anyone being alone or unhappy tonight. And if you start to feel yourself getting sad, you just watch my husband dance. It's very funny. <laughs> You're all so nice. We enjoy being nice to each other. There's not much else to do in this town. Oh, but I don't have anything to wear. I'm sure I'll have something that'll do. I'll just call the house. Now, if you're interested, my garage apartment will be available soon. My son's living there now, but just give me a day to straighten it up and sweep out the bed, then come look at it. I'm sure we can work out some arrangement with the rent. Oh! <laughs> Good. Jonathan, you have to do me a favor. Yes, now. Go into my closet and bring me two or three of my Sunday things. Just anything. Use your judgment. Very well. Bring me the, the pink dress with the white collar and the pink suit with the cherries pin on the jacket and the pink and white polka dots. No, Jonathan, Mama does not have Daddy's gun. Don't you have anything better to do? What? Well, stop him now. Something's the what? Yes? What the hell? Daddy tied his closest to Jonathan's G.I. Joe bow and arrow and shot them into the trees. Shut up, Red! Oh, well, the birds are flying every which way and this white smoke billowing up from your backyard. John's either caught his trees on fire or he's just elected a new pope. It seems to be working. All the birds are flying oh. away. That's all she wrote. I'm going to let that man have it. Oh, no, Miss Weezer, your dog broke his chain. He's headed toward the smoke. Do something, Weezer! Oh, call your dog. He'll listen to you. Miss Weezer, say something. It's my wedding day. Kill, rat. Shelby! Mama, where is everybody? I thought you weren't coming to town until after lunch. Oh, we got an early start because of traffic, and we wanted to stop in on Jackson's parents on the way down. What a treat! Yes, I need to catch them early on Saturdays because they like to wake up at the crack of dawn to start hunting furry little creatures. You must not have visited long. We didn't. I could tell they were anxious to start killing things. We stopped by the house first, but nobody was there. Where's Truvy? <laughs> she and Anel are out back, sticking pennies in the fuse box. They decorated that little tree over there, and when I plugged it in, all the lights blew. Mama, what are those things? <laughs> They're red plastic poinsettia earrings. They're a gift from Anel. As you can see, she's discovered the wonderful world of arts and crafts. <laughs> Well, are the boys home yet? Yes, Jonathan got home yesterday morning. He loves his classes. It's all he can talk about. Of course, I think the main thing architecture school has taught him is how much he should hate his parents' house. Tommy arrived yesterday, last night, and he has immediately started terrorizing your father. It's nice having the family home for Christmas. Well, some things never change. How are you, honey? I'm so good, Mama. I'm just great. You're looking well. Is Jackson at the house? No, you know how twitchy he gets. I sent him out to look for stocking stuffers. Good thinking. Uh, Mama, Jackson and I have something to tell you. We wanted to tell you when you and Daddy were together, but you're never together, so it's every man for himself. I'm pregnant. Shelby. I'm gonna have a baby. 
I realize that. Is that it? Is that all you're going to say? What would you have me say? Something along the lines of congratulations. Congratulations. Would it be too much to ask for a little excitement? Not too much now. I wouldn't want you to work up a sweat or I'm anything. in a state of shock, Shelby. I didn't think Mama that... Mama, in June, Jackson and I are going to get a house. We're going house hunting next week. Jackson loves to hunt for anything. What does Jackson say about this? Oh, he's so excited. He says he doesn't care whether it's a boy or a girl, but I know he wants a son so bad he can hardly stand it. He's so cute about the whole thing. Jackson Latchery, Jr. I know that's what he's saying, Shelby. But seriously, does he ever listen? I mean, you never listen when doctors and specialists give you advice, but why doesn't he? I guess since he doesn't have to carry the child, it's no real concern of his. Mama, don't be mad. I couldn't bear it if you were, and it's Christmas. I'm not mad, Shelby. This is just hard. I didn't, I didn't think that, I don't know. Mama, I want a child. What about the adoption proceedings, honey? You filed so many... It didn't take us long to see the handwriting on the wall. No judge is going to give a baby to someone with my medical track record. Jackson even put out some feelers about buying one. People do it all the time. Mama, listen to me. I want a child of my own. I think it would help things a lot. I see. Mama, I know. I know. Don't think I haven't given this a lot of thought. But you can't live a life if all you do is worry. And you worry too much. In some ways, it's a comfort, because I know you're doing all the worrying for us. But Jackson and I have given this a lot of thought. Has he really? There is a first time for everything. Don't start on Jackson. Shelby, your poor body has been through so much. Why would you deliver? Mama, want... diabetics have healthy babies all the time. But Shelby, you are special. There are limits to what you can do. Listen to me, Mama. I've thought it out, and I'm going to be very careful. And this time next year, I'll be bringing your big, healthy grandbaby to the Christmas festival. And no one will be hurt, or disappointed, or even inconvenienced. Least of all, Jackson, I'm sure. You are jealous, because you no longer have a say-so in what I do, and that drives you up the wall. You ready to spit nails, because you can no longer call the shots? Shelby, I did not raise my daughter to talk to me this way. Yes, you did. Whenever any one of us asked you what you wanted us to be when we grew up, what did you say? I am not in the mood for games. What did you say, Mama? Just tell me what you said. Answer me. I said, all I want is for you to be happy. Okay. The thing that would make me happy is to have a baby. Mama, if I could adopt one, I would, but I can't. I'm going to have a baby. Just wish you would be happy. I wish. I don't know what I wish. I don't know why you have to make everything so complicated. I look at having this baby as the opportunity of a lifetime. And sure, there's some risk involved, but that's true for anybody. You get through it, and life goes on, Mama. And after it's all said and done, you have this little piece of immortality with, with Jackson's good looks and, and my sense of style, I hope. Mama, please, I need your support. I'd rather have 30 minutes of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special. Truvy, they're on. Don't tell anyone yet, please. I want to tell Daddy first. I never tell anybody anything. Well, look who's here. Come give me a hug right here and now. Truvy, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And now we have a special mystery guest. And you're just in time. You can have the honor of light in the tree of beauty. Well, what a novelty to decorate it in hair things. It was all I nails idea. She has quite an eye for the unusual. Hi there. <laughs> a nail. You did all this. Guilty as charged. Truby turned the decoration responsibilities over to me. I love a theme and I despise the commercialization of Christmas. I always have. So last month, I went down to the fire sale at the Baptist Bookstore in Shreveport where they had mismatched manger scenes at unbelievably low prices, and I cleaned them out of baby Jesus's, which Truby's husband helped me modify into Christmas ornaments. Very simple. Tiny white lights, baby Jesus's, and spoolies. My husband has redone Poot's old room so Aunt Elle can have a workshop for her handicrafts. That little garage apartment is so crowded. Well, that's nice. 
Do your boys coming home for Christmas? No. Louie brought home his girlfriend at Thanksgiving. The nicest thing I can say about her is all her tattoos are spelled correctly. <laughs> so I guess it's just me and the old man and a nail. Now, oh, come, do the honors, Missy. Hope it doesn't blow up this time. See, I know what I'm doing. Oh, and I am. Oh, that'll be perfect. I know your mama is so pleased that you got home early enough to go to the festival. I hear it's going to be the best ever. More fireworks, a nativity scene made entirely of sparklers, and a huge new sign down by the riverbank that says, I heart Chinkapin Parish. It's going to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. And guess who the Grand Marshal of the parade is? Wayne Newton. I wouldn't miss a Christmas festival for the world. <laughs> Mama, while I'm thinking about it, I brought some white chocolate cherry cheesecakes for our open house. Doesn't sound like finger food to me. Well, they're bite-sized, like this. Fine, I'm sure you know what you're doing. It's just perfect. perfect. Okay. And Mama, while I'm thinking about it, I'm, I'm also cleaning out some closets, and I brought you some things that I've hardly worn that I don't want anymore. I thought your patients might be a little less disturbed if they had something stylish to wear. Um, excuse me, Shelby. If you don't have anything special in mind for those clothes, could I have them? Riverview Baptist has a clothes closet for the poor, and we're real low on women's dresses. Sure, that's a great idea. They're in the car. I'll get them in a minute. And now. You know, Truvy is so mad that I won't go to the Methodist church with her. She uh -huh. hates that I refuse to go and only go to Riverview Baptist. Well, I think that Riverview Baptist is just a little too praise the Lord for my taste. It's true. Some of them do get a little carried away. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, not at all. A lot of mama's patients are born again Christians. Well, I only mean that in the best sense of the word. <laughs> well, we're just so glad Aunt Nellie's settling down and finding her way. She's had a rough few months, haven't you, honey? It's true. Once they finally put Bucky to plea behind bars and I was rid of him, I went wild. <laughs> Smoking, drinking, running Jezebel. around. Jezebel! <laughs> but Truvy helped me see the error of my ways. She helped me realize I have something to offer. I joined the church last month. And she's helped me see that I have talents. I have done guest lectures on beauty down at the trade school. Our little Aunt Nell is one of the hot tickets in town. Oh, Truvy, stop. But I am enjoying the city more. <laughs> I'm so excited about the Christmas festival. I've wanted to go my entire life, and I live here now. <laughs> well, tell her who you have a date with. Oh, Truby, hush. Tell her, Missy. Shelby's practically totally responsible for the whole thing. Sammy DeSoto. He's got a body that doesn't stop anywhere. Well, how am I responsible? He was bartending at your wedding last spring. That's when we met. He makes a mean cherry Coke. Romance. This is what I live for. What can we do for you today, Shelby? Absolutely nothing. I just discovered the early stages of crow's feet last week. Oh, honey, time marches on, and eventually you realize it's marching across your face. <laughs> How are you feeling? Never better. My annual pecan tassies. There's my girl. I guess you're the happy one this morning. Yes, I am. First state championship in eight years. Oh. Hi, darling. Hi, Miss Clary. Can I get you some coffee? Oh, that sounds great. I'm sorry I'm late. I overslept. We didn't get back into town last night till after 1 o'clock. A dazzling victory over dry prawn. I heard you on the radio. You were wonderful. Well, what were you doing on the radio? Oh, they let me be color announcer for the devils. I was fabulous. Too colorful for words. Well, that's nice they let you talk on the radio. <laughs> nice nothing. I own the station. You bought it. KPPD, station of choice in Chicopin Parish. Shelby, how do you like Clary's new short and sassy look? I love it. Just wait till I jack it up. It makes you look younger, Miss Clary. My hair looks younger, my face looks just as old. <laughs> there is so much going on. The state championships last night, the Christmas festival today, the Messiah sing-along tomorrow. Life in the big city will spoil you. Well, who won Miss Merry Christmas this year? Well, Nancy Beth, my niece, of course. <laughs> She was in here at 7 this morning. I had to position her tiara properly on her head so it wouldn't slip around during the parade. I sprayed her hair within an inch of its life. <laughs> well, I should have won. The talent the year I ran, 
You huh. should have known that Nancy Beth would win that contest. Well, I know she's so pretty. <laughs> you know Nancy Beth is pretty. Did you know that she is not only Miss Merry Christmas, but Miss Soybean and Miss Watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> but dumb as a post. Empty is the head that wears the crown. <laughs> Well, you have to admit, God did a little dance around that family. Drew is so successful. Belle does her own hair. The children are perfect. They're like a family on TV. They don't have a care in the world. That's not necessarily true. Oh? That's all I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> well, like I was saying, I should have won the pageant the year I ran. My talent was very showy. Oh, we told you at the time, Shelby. Five batons are not everyone's cup of tea. Well, Mama certainly didn't approve of my twirling fire baton. I just don't approve when you insist on doing dangerous things, Shelby. Mama hated those things. I didn't hate anything. I supported you. Just couldn't watch you. Your father, on the other hand, had a field day. He got such a kick out of standing in the backyard watching you practice for hours, holding a fire hose so he could put you out when you caught fire. <laughs> Well, my entire pageant ensemble was coordinated in shades of pink, soup to nuts, and I twirled to the music from Hawaii Five-O. It's my theme song. We were very proud of her. Well, the year I competed, the swimsuit competition was my downfall. You know, most women look for a swimsuit that will lift and separate. I look for one that will divide and conquer. <laughs> I've always been built for comfort, not for speed. Well, who won the title your year, Miss Clary? Oh, child, there wasn't even a Christmas festival when I was in high school. Why, Jesus wasn't even born till I was a junior in college. <laughs> I remember it well, my friends and I watching our flocks by night. <laughs> Get over here, Clary. I got a gift wrap your head. Mm. I could just spit. Morning, Weezer. The parade doesn't start for four hours and already people are parking on my grass. They're all flatten my lawn. Let me hold you. Oh, <laughs> I hate out-of-town tourists. Well, hello. Oh, um, Shelby, what are you doing here? Being a tourist, I guess, but I promise not to flatten your lawn. Good God, Shelby, you had the good sense to move away from this festival badness. I can't imagine why you drag yourself back here for a couple of firecrackers and a bunch of drunk teenagers erping on your shoes. <laughs> well, you know I you like need? it. You need a good dose of the Christmas spirit, Miss Weezer. I have so much Christmas spirit, I could scream. Here, Merry oh. Christmas. Well, I just put out my lawn decorations. Weezer, I don't think keep off the grass signs are considered Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> They're bordered in holly. <laughs> Oh, oh, ugh. You made them, didn't you? With my own two hands. Uh, your present's back at the house. I have yet to wrap it. Oh. House red. <laughs> oh, he's getting along. In fact, he's wondered the, the Christmas festival dog. Oh, that is red. I didn't recognize him. Oh. It's nice to see Rhett with some hair again. <laughs> well, I need to run some errands, but before I go, Miss Weezer, I've met a friend of yours. Oh. Owen Jenkins. Oh. Oh, and now there's a blast from the past. Do you remember him? He remembers you. Of course I remember him. He had the longest nose hair of anyone in the free world. <laughs> well, now he does, and he has hardly any hair anywhere. <laughs> Owen's been gone from Cheeky Pen since God was a boy. <laughs> Why, I've forgotten he even existed. Well, now, Owen lives in Monroe, and he goes to First Presbyterian and sings in the choir. And the other night at choir practice, we were doing this especially beautiful Mozart thing, and I was moved to tears. So he offered me his handkerchief, and we got to talking. And when he found out I was from here, he asked if I knew you. And I said, not only do I know you, but you're a neighbor, and your dog has nearly killed my father on numerous occasions. <laughs> <laughs> but he's led a very interesting life. He lived in Ohio somewhere, and now his wife has died, so he moved back down here. Does this story have a point? Well, no, not really, but I just think he remembers you fondly, that's all. Oh, can't imagine why. He wasn't a bad fellow, but I managed to run him off and marry the first of two total deadbeats. 
Unrequited love, my favorite. Well, maybe sometime I could arrange for us all to get together. Oh, well, maybe not. Well, why not? Oh, Shelby. In a few decades, I managed to marry the two most worthless men in the universe, and I proceeded to have three of the most ungrateful children ever conceived. Now, people are nice to me only because I have more money than God. I'm not about to open up a new can of worms. Do I detect some negativity in your tone? <laughs> Waza, if that's really the way you feel, that's not healthy. Perhaps you should think about coming down and talking to somebody at the guidance center. We're there to help. Marion, I'm not crazy. I've just been in a very bad mood for about 40 years. <laughs> well, I need to get those clothes out of my back seat and now where do you want them? Just bring them in. Okay, and then I'm gonna go finish my Christmas shopping, Mama. Well, I could shoot you. I haven't even started. Oh, I haven't even done my dishes from Thanksgiving. <laughs> What'd you get your mama for Christmas, Shelby? I told her what part of it was this morning. Well, let's hear it, Missy. I think it's a secret. Obviously, there's no such thing in this room. It's up to you, honey. I'm gonna have a baby. Oh, oh congratulations, my man. No wonder you haven't said very much this morning. Grandma, aren't you excited? Smile, it increases your face value. <laughs> Shelby, and those doctors said you couldn't have any children. What did they know? I guess you showed them. The doctors said Shelby shouldn't have any children. It's a big difference. Guess you showed us all, Shelby. I need to get those clothes out of the car. Um, before I go, Miss Weasel, you bring in your shrimp meat pies to our open house tonight. Don't they always? They'll be there. Good. So will Owen Jenkins. I open those worms for you. <laughs> I can't believe she did that. Oh, after all these years, I'm not sure I can be gracious under pressure. <laughs> Shelby, Shelby. Her heart does get the best of her sometimes. Oh, oh, honey. Having this baby, that's not exactly great news, is it? She wants this so badly, Truvy. I just don't know. Well, I wish I had some words of wisdom, but I don't. So I will focus on the joy of the situation. Congratulations. Absolutely. Diabetics have healthy babies all the time. I'm sure everything will be fine. Of course it will. Thank you, ladies. You know what, you're right. You know what they say, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. What is that girl up to? She's donating clothes to the poor. I hope poor people like paint. <laughs> Just jump them on the bench. Oh, Ms. Malin, are you sure you don't mind? I mean, if your patients need them and all. No. Shelby said you could have them. And what Shelby says goes. Mama, that's not true. Shelby always insists on having the last word. I do not. <laughs> You're listening to KPPD, the station of choice in Jinkapin Parish. Now stop by the shopping center this afternoon. I'll be broadcasting al fresco. That means out of doors for those of you who aren't Latin scholars. There'll be prizes and Battle of the Bands, all sponsored by KPPD. Swing on by and meet me in person. See how good looking I really am. Coming up now, a half hour of non-stop music so I can make it over to the shopping center. Let's hope none of these records has a scratch on them because I'm out of here. I'm going to kick things off with one of my personal all-time favorites. See you at the shopping center. I want to feel you feel. Didn't he scare you to death by coming by so late? It wasn't that late. It's about 9.30, I guess. Still someone knocking on my bedroom window after Doc would have scared the daylights out of me. Not me. Hope springs eternal, I suppose. I was just disappointed when it was only my nephew. Well, I just think it's awful of Drew to kick his son out of the house. Parents should never kick their children out of the house. Oh, my brother could be a real hothead when he wants to be, but he really didn't kick Marshall out of the house. 
Marshall came over to my house to let his daddy cool off. I adore Marshall. We stayed up half the night last night talking. Well, that's it. Are you ready to see the new Shelby Latchery? I don't know. Well, you're gonna have to sooner or later. Our world is full of reflective surfaces. I can't believe I'm being so ridiculous over something as silly as a haircut. You look precious. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, gosh. It's so weird. Well, I did what you wanted, didn't I, honey? Yes, it's just... Oh, I didn't mean that. You did a beautiful job. It's just... I've never had short hair, that's all. <laughs> it's what we Cosmo girls call a right to passage. I'm sorry I'm being so ridiculous. Oh, honey, it's okay. Please, please don't cry, because you know I will too. I have a strict policy. No one cries alone in my presence. Ladies, ladies, please remind me never to take these two to see Dark Victory. They'd never survive it. Enough. I love my hair. Phew. My artistic nature is so relieved. It's very becoming, Shelby. I bet with that baby, you don't have time to spend hours fussing with your hair. You need something you can just run your fingers through and go. Totally adorable, and your mother's gonna love it. Mama's gonna have a fit. She thinks I'm just getting a trim. I wouldn't up for a big debate with her this morning. Now, Trivi, let's do my nails. Oh, this is a treat. Nobody around here ever wants a manicure. I wouldn't even know what to charge for a full day of beauty. I want the works. I wanna feel completely pampered today. And Mama's gonna want her nails done, too. Well. I'm gonna paint my front door red and change my name to Elizabeth Arden. <laughs> Manic manicures, saucy new hairdos, what's going on around here? Oh, we're always up to something, you know. But I wanna get back to this Drew and Belle nonsense. I hope they can reconcile with Marshall. Speaking as a parent, they'd better get their act together. I do not approve of friction between parents and children. Oh, I think it'll all blow over, but I must admit, he did go about it the wrong way. Well, what did he do? Marshall drove in from Los Angeles unannounced while Belle and Drew were getting ready for the annual Marmillion Shrimp Ball. And Marshall, without even so much as a hello, says, Mama, Daddy, I got something to tell you. I got a brain tumor and I got three months to live. Well, naturally, Belle and Drew became hysterical. Then Marshall says, Hey, folks, I'm just kidding. I'm only gay. Oh. 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 And that was his idea of breaking the news gently. Well, Drew became incredibly distraught, started throwing wet shrimp at him and screaming for him to get out of his sight. And he came over to my house smelling like a can of cat food. Oh. What do you think Drew and Belle are feeling right now? I don't know. They just always considered themselves to be such a model family. And first with Nancy Beth being dethroned from her Miss Mary Christmas title after that unfortunate motel thing. <laughs> What motel thing? I don't live here anymore, remember? Nancy Beth was discovered in a nearby motel with a high political official. Honey, they were both high. They'd been smoking everything but their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> to be the only Miss Merry Christmas in history caught with the tinsel down around the knees was a very humiliating experience for the Marmillion family. Well, how do you feel about Marshall? Well, I haven't really thought about it, but I want you to know he is always welcome at my house. I am so proud of Marshall. He has built up that chain of sportswear stores all by himself without a penny of family money. As Marshall always says, I am a self-made man. I have pulled myself up by my own jock straps. <laughs> he could always turn a phrase. Amen. Amen. Um, and now, I think we're almost out of the... Uh, Is it still next to you? Uh, no, it's over the... Oh, okay. Was she praying? Yes. Why? Got me. Maybe she was praying for Marshall and Drew and Belle. Maybe she was praying for us because we were gossiping. Or maybe she was praying because the elastic is shot in her pantyhose. <laughs> Who knows? She prays at the drop of a hat these days. Well, how long has she been that way? Ever since Mardi Gras. She had her choice of going on a Bible weekend with her Sunday school class or going to New Orleans with me and two other sinners. She left here on Friday, a pleasant, well-adjusted young lady, and returned on Tuesday, a Christian. Well, what does her boyfriend have to say about all this? Sammy's so confused, he doesn't know whether to scratch his watch or wind his butt. 
He's crazy about her, and he says he could deal with another man in her life, but he has trouble with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm pretty religious, but that stuff makes me feel kind of creepy. Well, I'm torn. I've got two sons I'm afraid are going to hell in a handcart and a semi-daughter who strives to be the kind of girl that Jesus would bring home to Mama. I don't know what to think. I don't understand those people, but sometimes they seem to have a peace about things that I've never had. Maybe I'm just jealous. And Marshall is so thoughtful. He bought me this pen. It's gold and enamel. It's a bug. It's fine. Jewelry. It's little eyes and rubies. My best dope. <laughs> Well, Miss Clary, does Marshall have any, you know, friends? Well, we've talked about that because I'm such a nosy old thing. <laughs> I said, Marshall, how do you mm, meet people? Because in my day, you could tell by a man's carriage and demeanor which side his bread was buttered on. But today, in this day and age, who knows? I said, Marshall, how can you tell? He said, all gay men have track lighting and all gay men are named Mark, Rick, or Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a nut. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Rick, or Steve. Morning. Oh, morning, Weezer. What's so funny? <laughs> Miss Perry was just telling us the true story of track lighting. <laughs> I love mine. It highlights my new artwork. Since when do you have track lighting? About three weeks. It's in my foyer and up the stairs. It was my grandson's idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, how is he? I haven't seen him in ages. Steve's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Brought y'all some tomatoes, first of the season. I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I'm here. Well, take some tomatoes home with you. There's plenty. Woo! Your hair's short. Looks good. Thanks, Miss Weezer. Jack Jr. loves tomatoes. He smears them all over the cafe curtains in the kitchen. <laughs> Your mother says you have become an incredible gourmet cook. Well, I try. When we were first married, all Jackson wanted was meat and potatoes and vegetables just the way his mama made them, cooked a mush. <laughs> but I broke him of that and I even got some pate down him last week. He swore it was dog food. <laughs> but Jack Jr. loved it though. <laughs> Clary, how many tomatoes do you, do you want? Tomatoes have, have no calories and they're ooh, full of things. Oof. Weezer, you're almost chipper today. Why are you in such a good mood? Did you run over a small child or something? <laughs> do you or do you not want some tomatoes? Don't give me all of them. Somebody's got to take them. I hate them. I try not to eat anything healthy if I can possibly help it. The sooner this body wears out, the better off I'll be. Why, I have trouble getting enough grease in my diet. <laughs> then why do you grow them? I'm an old southern woman. We're supposed to put on funny looking hats and ugly old dresses and grow vegetables in the dirt. Don't ask me why. I don't make the rules. Weezer, you need to buy some gloves. Your hands look like a couple of T-bone steaks. Health is the most important thing, Miss Weezer. Trust me on this. And while I have everyone's attention, I went to the mailbox this morning and someone has put me on the mailing list for the Riverview Baptist church. <laughs> Lucky me, I'm getting chain letters for Christ. They're not chain letters. They're part of my prayer group's Reach Out and Touch program. We're each supposed to pick a member of the community who we think might be in spiritual trouble and invite them to worship. <laughs> well, I guess you made everybody's list. <laughs> I think it's... I think it's in the worst possible taste to pray for perfect strangers. Reach out to Weezer and you pull back a bloody stump. <laughs> Shelby, that reminds me, you're going to save me a phone call. Next Friday, Cicerelle and I are coming up to Monroe and we'd like to take you and Jackson for dinner, if we may. I can't Friday night, I'm sorry. But what's the occasion? Well, it's going to sound a little silly, but we're going up to the little theater. We got tickets for a play. I didn't know you went to see anything that didn't have a goal post at either end. Well, up until now I haven't, but one day at Bridge, Sis and I decided we needed to keep up. We decided we wanted to expose ourselves to some culture, and that's not easy to do in this neck of the woods. Well, exactly what are you exposing yourself to? Oh, I don't know, something. The last thing we saw was pretty good. It was Shakespeare. 
I was apprehensive at first, but you know when you get right down to it, he writes pretty straightforward stuff. I have to admit, when they start hiding behind those curtains and putting masks over their faces trying to fool people, that got kind of silly. Sis fell for it, but I didn't. Cicerella is so dumb, she thinks Sherlock Holmes is a subdivision. <laughs> well, anyway, we, we liked it so much, we're planning the theater trip to New York. New York? Oh, Clary, I'm green with envy. Promise me you'll go to the first floor of Bloomingdale's and come back and tell me everything. Women's Day says it's impossible to walk through there and not get made up. Oh, we're just talking. I'm scared to death to get on a plane. Oh, it's a piece of cake. You're safe for flying than you are in a car. Just sit in the rear. That's the best place to survive the crash. <laughs> Miss Weezer, why don't you go to Monroe with Miss Clary? I'm not exposing myself to anything. You need to broaden your horizon. You broaden your horizons your way, I'll broaden my horizons mine. Besides, I'm busy next Friday. I'm going to Shreveport to have my colors done. Your what? I'm gonna get my colors done. I'm gonna find out if I'm a spring, summer, fall, or winter. What are you talking about? Every person has a particular coloring. Spring, summer, so on. First, you find out what season you are. Then you know what colors look best on you. Then you're given a palette of all the sample colors that are good for you. It's most helpful when you shop for clothes. It gives you fashion courage. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Well, <laughs> it's all the rage. A lot of my friends in Monroe have had it done. There's a quiz in that family circle over there on that very topic. I'm the epitome of spring. Shelby, why don't you get yours done? You're so fashion conscious. No, I'm scared to. I'm afraid I might find out that pink is not in my palette. <laughs> and I'm not sure I could live with that. <laughs> well, I've heard everything. I'm off to see the theater. I want to support the arts in our area. I'll write a check. I'll support art. I just don't want to see it. Wouldn't hell if, <laughs> wouldn't hell if you, you know. Let's get one thing straight. You know, I don't go to plays because I can nap at home for free. And I don't go to movies because they're all trash and they're full of naked people. <laughs> and I don't read books because if they're any good, they'll be made into a miniseries. I'm surprised you and Daddy don't get along better than you do. Miss Weezer, I've been meaning to ask, um, how are things between you and Owen? I try to keep up, but I haven't been able to lately. They're all right. I enjoy his company on occasion. I can report that the Sherwood Floors delivery truck stops by her house at least twice a week. He knows I like fresh flowers. And I can report there's a strange car parked in her garage at least once a week. Oh, there, my secret's out. I'm having an affair with a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Wait, so forgive me, but I have been dying to ask this. Are you and Owen, uh, you know... Wait, 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 I gotta get a mental picture of that. <laughs> a dirty mind is a terrible thing to waste. Not that it's anyone's business, but no, we're just friends. He'd like more. <laughs> I'm dealing with that, but I'm old and set in my ways. <laughs> you are playing hard to get. At your age, you ought to be playing Beat the Clock. <laughs> you and that old dog of yours got the same problem. You're having trouble with your new tricks. Oh, I, I know, talking trash in my shop. <laughs> I can't help it if men find me desirable. <laughs> Shelby, when are you gonna bring that baby of yours by here? I brought pictures. Has he gained any weight? He's about 15 pounds now. Ooh, he's a tiny thing. Well, he was only a pound and a half when he was born. Give him time, he'll catch up. Bless his heart. We didn't know who to worry about the most, you or that baby. Well, I certainly wouldn't recommend having a baby three months premature. I get upset just thinking about it. Well, then let's don't. Yep, that Jack Jr. sure is a fighter, and he's gonna wear me out. I wish I knew where he got all that energy. Well, don't try to do it all yourself. Get that husband of yours to help. They're supposed to be helping out this decade. He helps, I guess. Mama doesn't think he does, but he does when he thinks about it, which isn't often. Actually, most of the time he doesn't do a damn thing, and every weekend he's off hunting. Oh, but, but Jackson certainly is a good provider. Yes. 
and he'll come around. And when he does, I want you to run, tell me how you accomplished it so I can get to work on that sofa slug I'm married to. This one's pretty. Oh, I thought so. Private Passion's my favorite. It's luscious without being sleazy. <laughs> oh, ladies, next Saturday we're gonna have to make some time adjustments. I'm gonna be here all by my lonesome, and Elle is taking a well-deserved vacation. That's nice, you're taking a trip. Yes, I am. You gonna tell us where you're going? No. Oh, please, Anel. I don't know how I can get through the week without this information. <laughs> You'll just make fun. You know I love it when you go on and on about your spiritual growth. I just can't get enough. She has a very nice little trip planned to Camp Crossroads in the Ozarks. I don't believe I've ever heard of a Camp Crossroads. It's in Arkansas. It's a Christian camp. There's just cabins, a chapel, and a dining hall in the middle of the mountains with a lake. I will spend the week in Bible study, prayer, and meditation. You are in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by the beauty of the Lord. Are there any water beds? Weezer, oh, leave her alone. Well, I'm just trying to find out all I can about Camp cross -Eyed. I may want to go there. That's a laugh. You've never done a religious thing in your life. That's Totally untrue. Back when I was in school, my friends and I would dress up like nuns and go bar hopping. <laughs> Is your boyfriend going with you? No, he says he'd rather eat dirt. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to check up on my granddaughter, make sure she's still going to the Episcopal Church. This bone again process is getting awfully tedious. You know, Miss Weezer, I have to say this, and I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but I worry about your faith sometimes. Oh, my faith is fine. It's my hair that needed some more work. Oh, Weezer, somebody's going to cut the feet out of your stockings one day. <laughs> and Weezer, have you no shame? It's all right, Truvy. I love Miss Weezer. I pray for her every day, sometimes twice. Good morning, everybody. Shelby. Mama, please don't say anything. I love it, and it'll be so much easier to deal with. Oh, honey, bless your heart. And it'll dry so quick, and all I have to do is run my fingers through it. But you haven't had short hair since kindergarten. I know, and I decided just today that every 25 years I'm going to get all my hair cut off. <laughs> I love it. It's not I too do. perky, is it? It looks great. I brought you a little goodie. You can open it later. Melinda, you must be so happy having your whole family home this weekend. Oh, Larry, it's rare indeed, but it's been very nice. Oh, any special reason? Oh, just to get together. It was our anniversary last week. You should have reminded me how to bake you something. Drum loves my nut surprise cake. Which anniversary was it? 30th. That's a big one. What's the 30th? How do you mean? Well, you know, first is paper, 20th is china, 25th is silver, so 30th must be... Valium. Oh. <laughs> what would Drum say if he heard you say that? Nothing. The man has no idea what Valium is. He prides himself on never having any tension, which is amazing considering the amount he has created over the years. Listen to me. You've got to stop taking pot shots at Drum. He's a good man. He's crazy, but he's a good man. Oh, he's a ball on the butt of humanity. <laughs> However, he seems to be behaving himself lately. He was most civil in the Piggly Wiggly yesterday. Why, I was caught off guard and smiled at him before I could help myself. <laughs> the most bizarre thing has happened lately. Drum and I seem to be rediscovering those things that have brought us together in the first place. I don't know if we've buried them or just become blind to them. Used to be the thought of our parents being romantic made me and my brother sick to our stomachs. <laughs> but now it's kind of sweet. It's been a lovely week. Every now and then, Drum and I seem to find these moments magic. I don't know. I don't know if I'm lucky to have what I have or to know what I have. Well, it's getting too deep for me. I need to go get my ties rotated. <laughs> Ms. Weezer. Ms. <laughs> Melinda, maybe you should write a romance novel based on your recent experiences. I could help you with the dirty parts. No one would believe it. <laughs> Shelby. You look a little pale. I'm fine, Mama. How are you? Ladies, if you're out and about this afternoon, stop by the Dixie Plaza Shopping Center. The radio station is sponsoring a summer fiesta, complete with prizes and live band. They call themselves 
single bullet theory. Shelby, what have you done to yourself? Oh, it doesn't hurt. Well, what have you been doing? Have you seen this, Melinda? Yes, and The I doctor's have. just been trying to strengthen my veins. They're in terrible shape. Shelby, you look like you've been running nails into your arms. What's going on here? Mama, shall we tell him? I guess so. There's no point in keeping it a secret any longer. Shelby's been driving nails into her arms. Oh, my no, Lynn, Lynn stop serious. it. What's going on It's just yeah. my dialysis. Your what? Dialysis. What? I know what it is. Please tell us what's going on, it's honey. It's no big thing, not any big thing. Stop looking at me like that. How long have you been doing this dialysis? A couple of months. Mary Lynn Eatonton, I am without words. Why have I not been told? We, well, there's no point. Sometimes you just don't want to talk about things. What would be the point? There's nothing you could do. We could have done something. You should have said something. This is selfish. This is very selfish Hold of you. Hold it. You're all talking like this is something. This isn't something. Having Jack Jr. just put too much strain on my kidneys and now they're kaput. That's all. The doctor said this would probably happen. That's all. That's all, she said. Well, I'm responding beautifully to dialysis. Do I look bad? No, you look beautiful. Well, maybe you'll tell us what's going to happen next. Does this go on forever? Well, I suppose it could, but that's not real convenient now when you have a 15-month-old ball of fire to chase after. So I'll just have a kidney transplant and I'll be fine. Is it that easy? Sure, they do them in Shreveport all the time, two or three a week. Oh, it's true. My Sunday school class mm -hmm. was praying for one just the other day. But the, 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 the hard part's finding a kidney, isn't it? I saw something about that on the news the other day. It's very dramatic. These medical teams, they get on a plane with a kidney or a heart or whatever, and you know what impressed me the most? They carry those organs in beer coolers. Stop! <laughs> I would not lie at a time as serious as this. They take out their six packs, throw in some dry ice and a heart, and they get on a plane. She's right. But you never know when one will pop up, do you? I'm registered on the nationwide transplant computer. But how long do you have to wait? Well, there are people at dialysis who've been waiting for years. That must be agony. I suppose so. But I'm lucky. I don't have to wait any longer. Mama's going to give me one of her kidneys. Wow, oh, Melinda. When? We check in tomorrow morning. You are giving her a kidney tomorrow morning and you haven't even mentioned it? <laughs> Truby, would you please do my hair? I am in a bit of a rush. I never thought there'd ever be a time when I'd be at a loss for words, but I think this is it. Why haven't you told us? We just told you. We haven't known that long. We were all just tested last week, and I'm the closest match. What do you mean, match? There are four categories for an organ match, and I match the best. Categories? Evening gowns, swimsuit, talent, and personality interviews. Oh, I'm gonna yank you bald-headed, smarty. We are very upset. I'm passed up set a long time ago. I'm sorry, it's Tommy's joke, and I think it's very funny. Well, no wonder your whole family's in town. I'm just so relieved it was me. The boys are so young, I'd never want them to go through this. Who would want one of Drum's mean old organs? But the best part of it is, we've discovered with all this testing and stuff that I have the constitution of someone 10 years younger. Oh, how about that? Must be so painful. Well, no, not really for me. My operation's simple. But Mama's is awful. They practically have to saw her in half to get to her kidney. It's major, major surgery. They have to saw you in half? Oh, Truvy, they do it on Circus of the Stars all the time. This is, <laughs> this is no laughing matter. Trust me, Miss Clary, there have been plenty of tears. <clears throat> Guess what, everybody? It's going to wait a waist smaller. I have to take out my bottom ribs to get to my kidney. <laughs> Well, Cher had her ribs removed to have a smaller waist. Oh, please, that woman's out of her mind. Look, Shelby, earlier this morning, I said I'd be better off when this body wears out. I didn't mean that. You know better than to pay any attention to anything I say. Forget about it, Miss Weezer. I'm a terrible person. Oh, no, you're not, Weezer. You'd give your dog a kidney if he needed one. Well, yeah, absolutely. But you two seem so calm and collected. I'm happy. Look at the opportunity I have. Most mothers only have a chance to give their child life once. I have the chance to do it twice. I think it's neat. And besides, Shelby needs her help to keep up with that rambunctious kid of hers. I have two kidneys, I only need one. 
I'm just so glad they can get this done before it's too hot. Well, ain't that the truth. I'm going to postpone my vacation today so I can sit with your husband in the hospital. I can run get Coca-Colas and things. Oh, that's sweet, but don't change your plans. And we'll make sure Drum has enough food. And you must put <laughs> your house out of your mind. We're going to take care of everything. I really appreciate that. I know Drum does, too. Oh, Malin, you are brave. You are so brave. Shelby, if I didn't know anybody, I'd never know you'd ever been sick a day in your life. <laughs> That's the best compliment anyone has ever given me. Oh, poor Shelby. Don't say that. I have my baby and I'm happy. And if this is part of the price I have to pay, then I'll pay it. And I'll deal with it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, someone has a present to open. Ooh, is that for me? Only if you wear a size four. Well, I can take it in. Mama, would you? <laughs> Just a little something I got, and it was on sale, truthfully. <laughs> well, ladies, am I fabulous or what? <laughs> God bless you, Shelby. Shelby, you're going to be the sassiest girl in that hospital. <laughs> what about me? Oh, <laughs> well, you ladies better come visit us. We're going to be right by your side when you wake up, Shelby. You too, Melan. We'll manage and, it somehow. And I'll keep drum calm during the operation. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mama, we are in such good hands. You're going to be a while, so I'm going to go back to the house and spend some time with Daddy. Good. Drum's not taking this very well. He gets so emotional over the least little things. Truvy, this is probably going to gross you out, but could I have my hair? Is that too repulsive? People do it all the time. It's just I've had it so long, I guess it represents an era or something. Oh, honey, your nails. I'll put it in a box and give it to you, Mama. I love you all. Miss Clary, would you do me a favor? Of course. Next time you talk to Drew and Belle, I know they're upset about Marshall and all. But you just tell them that I said if this is the most disturbing thing that's ever happened to them, they should just get over it. I'll do it today. Truvy, why isn't my radio playing?
proud of our Devils on their 14th straight victory. And if they keep playing like this, the Devils might just have another state championship to call their own. That final playoff score again, 27 to 6. There's no new word on the lawsuit brought by the Reverend Q.T. Bennett against the Chincapin Parish Board of Education. The Reverend, who is pastor of the Riverview Baptist Church, has filed suit charging that the use of the devil as a mascot for our high school team encourages satanic behavior in the youth of our community. When reached for comment about the Reverend's lawsuit, Devil's head coach, Wadi Thibodeau, said, and I quote, tell him to go to H-E double hockey sticks. I'm sorry, honey, you know I would if I could, but I just can't today. I could squeeze you in first thing Monday. Fine. See you then, Susan. Thirty-nine degrees. You're right, Truvy. It's too cold for this time of year. I'm gonna write a letter. I don't like it one bit. I turn blue when it's this cold, and blue isn't even in my palate. Anne Boleyn had six fingers. Who's Anne Boleyn? Anne Boleyn. She was one of the six wives of Henry the Eighth. Oh, I don't watch public television. <laughs> she had six fingers. What happened to the other four? She had eleven total. Are you trying to confuse me? What are you talking about? This article says Anne Boleyn had six fingers on one hand, so she had her dresses made, so the sleeves came down to a fingertip, so she wouldn't look so weird. Oh, Reader's Digest is a font of useful information. Clary, I just love my scarf. You are so thoughtful. It really jazzes up this outfit. The only thing that separates us from the animals is our ability to accessorize. <laughs> I'm gonna spray just a little more of my new French perfume. I love it so much. I just love the way the smell fills up the air. Well, don't waste it. That stuff ain't cheap. Woo! Save it, honey. We're gonna to have to burn our clothes as it is. <laughs> I'm just so touched that you remembered us. Oh, I had a ball shopping. I don't care what anybody says. Those French people are friendly. Most of them had the courtesy to speak English. And I love Weezers, too. I may want to borrow that sometime. Oh, you're welcome to it. You don't like it, do you? It's perfect for me. A print this busy will never show dog hair. <laughs> My feet are like two blocks of ice. Well, this tastes like it was made in a rubber tie. And I'll remember to get that new thing for the Mr. Coffee. Have any of you seen her this morning? I haven't. I went directly to the house when I got in, but only the boys were there. Do you think she'll come by? I doubt it. I imagine her hair's the furthest thing from her mind. Well, who knows what's on her mind, but she might need something, and I just wanted to be here for her. Truby, I'm glad you decided to stay open today. You know, my, my husband and I are going to take some barbecue over there later. I've never seen so much food. You can never have too much at times like these. My husband's back in the apartment cooking up a storm. He's convinced his red beans and rice will make anybody feel better. <laughs> Maybe he's right. That's why we call it soul food. <laughs> I'd like to get his recipe. Well, you'll have to ask him. He ushers me out of the kitchen every time he starts cooking. That kitchen's so tiny, he's afraid he's going to hit me in the stomach with a spatula. <laughs> and now when are you moving? Next month. You had to bring it up. I'm just so upset that she's going to move just as I was about to become a semi-grandmother. Mm. Oh, Truvy, it's just down the street, a hop, skip, and a jump. You're toying with me, aren't you? Well, maybe a little. Not a lot. I guess it's just me and the old man. Old Truby, be thankful. You'd miss him if he were gone. <laughs> you know, last night he actually got up off the sofa and said, let's go out to eat. Well, after I came to, I asked him, what's the matter? I thought Deputy Dog had been preempted. <laughs> then he said he's got a good shot at doing the electrical contracting for the new college library. Mm. I'm not supposed to tell anybody. Hello, everybody. Mm. Welcome home, Clary. How was Paris? Perfectly beautiful. I ate too much. Brought you something pretty? No, you shouldn't have. Don't turn off Shelby's radio. I like the noise. 
They're playing. This has got special programming today. I sent Jonathan down to the station to pull some of Shelby's favorite music, and they're going to play it till noon. He told me. I think you're going to be surprised at some of the stuff you're going to hear. Oh, that's fine. It's for Shelby. Come on in. Just tell us. What can we do? Thank you. Proovy, do you think you could work some magic? I know I look like 10 miles of dirt road. Let me get my wand and my fairy dust. How are you feeling, honey? I'm fine. I'm a little worried about Drum, though. The boys got in last night. I don't really know how they're doing. Jackson is Jackson. He's got his hands full with Jack Jr. I will admit, it is hard to be somber with a baby running around. Lynn, I'm beside myself. Wasn't Shelby fine when I left? Can you talk about it? I'm sure. Basically, after the transplant failed, she went back on dialysis. But you knew that. She's been doing fine the last few months. And last Monday, everything went wrong. It was like dominoes. They thought they could correct things with a little surgery. As they wheeled her down, she said, Mama, I'm going to feel so good when this is over. And they gave her the anesthetic. In a way, she was right. Maybe she knew she was going to be with her king. Yes, Anel, maybe so. We should be rejoicing. You go ahead. I wish I could feel that way. I guess I'm a little selfish. I would rather have her here. Miss Malin, I don't mean to upset you when I say things like that. It's just that, well, when something like this happens, I pray very hard to make heads or tails of it. And in Shelby's case, I think she just wanted to take care of everybody, of that baby, of you, of everybody she knew, and her poor body just wouldn't let her. It was worn out. So she went on to a place where she could be a guardian angel, somewhere where she'll always be young, she'll always be beautiful, and I personally feel much safer knowing that she's up there on my side. And I know that some people may think that that makes me sound simple or stupid, and maybe I am, but that's how I get through things like this. Thank you, Anel. I really appreciate that. And that's a very good idea. Shelby, as you know, would not want us to get all mired down and wallow in this. She would look on it as one of life's occurrences that we should deal with the best way we know how and get on with it. That's what my mind says, Truvy, but I wish somebody would explain that to my heart. Tommy said you didn't leave her side. <laughs> well, I wasn't in the mood to play bridge. No, I couldn't leave my Shelby. You know, it's interesting. Both the boys were very difficult births. They almost died when Jonathan was born. Very difficult births. But Shelby was a breeze. I could have gone home the afternoon I'd had her. I was thinking about that as I sat next to Shelby while she was in the coma. I would work her legs and her arms to keep the circulation going. I told the ICU nurse we were doing our Jane Fonda. I stayed there. I kept on pushing, just like I always have where Shelby was concerned, hoping she'd sit up and argue with me. But finally, we all realized there was no hope. At that point, I panicked. I did not think I was going to survive the next few minutes while they turned off the machines. Drum couldn't take it. He left. Jackson couldn't take it. He left. That struck me as amusing. Men are supposed to be made of steel or something. And I stayed there. I sat there holding Shelby's hand while the sounds got softer and the beats got farther apart until all was quiet. There was no tremble, no noise, just peace. I realized as a woman how lucky I was. I was there when this wonderful creature drifted into my life. And I was there when she drifted out. It was the most precious moment of my life thus far. Well, I don't know how your insides are doing, but your hair's holding up beautifully. <laughs> All it needs is a lick and a promise. Did you have it done in Shreveport? Oh, no, I did it myself, Truby. Oh, hold it, Missy. I don't want to hear that kind of talk. It was so odd doing my own hair. I had no idea about the back. Well, you did a lovely job. All I did was smooth out the rough spots. In fact, I'm going to be looking for some temporary help when Annelle goes on maternity leave. <laughs> you interested? This just was so much going on. I really didn't know if I'd have time or would even feel like coming here. But this morning, I wanted to be here more than anything. Isn't that silly? No. <laughs> you know, last night, I went into Shelby's closet to get something. And guess what I found? All her Christmas presents. It's 
stacked up, wrapped with her own two hands. I'd better go. Oh, well, check the back. <sighs> What's perfect is always droopy. You know, Shelby, Shelby was right. It does look like a brown football helmet. Oh, honey, <laughs> sit right back down. Are you going to be all right? Yes, yes, I feel fine. I feel great. I could jog to Texas and back. But my daughter can't. She never could. I am so mad. I don't know what to do. I want to know why. I want to know why Shelby's life is over. How is that baby ever going to understand how wonderful his mother was? How will he ever understand what she went through for him? I don't understand. Lord, I wish I could. And it's not supposed to happen this way. I'm supposed to go first, Ruby. I've always been ready to go first. I'm so mad. I don't know what to do. I just want to hit somebody until they feel as bad as I do. I just want to hit something and hit it hard. <laughs> Here, hit this. Go ahead, Melinda. Slap her. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Are you hollering? Oh, you lost your mind. Bring it up, T-shirt, saying I slap Weezer Moon. Go hit her. <laughs> Call 911. Don't let her beauty stand in the way. Hit her. <laughs> Miss Perry, enough. <laughs> Weezer, this is your chance to do something for your fellow man. Stop her lights out, Melinda. Perry, <laughs> you're going to tick God off if you're not careful. Let go of me. Melinda, you just this a chance of a lifetime. Most of Chicken Pin Parents are giving their eyes. Take a wagon, Weezer. <laughs> you are a pig from hell. Oh. <laughs> All right, then go ahead, hit me. I deserve it. Oh. <laughs> that was very what funny. What ever would we do without Clary's own special brand of humor? <laughs> Clary, you are evil and you must be destroyed. <laughs> Honey, Mother Nature's taking care of that a lot quicker than you could. <laughs> Way too serious there for a minute, Malia. I'm sorry. We all deserve our sorrow. Oh, girl, that was funny. You made me laugh. <laughs> it was very funny, Miss Clary. I have to admit, I laughed, even though it wasn't a very Christian thing to do. <laughs> honey, oh, honey, you're gonna have to lighten up. My husband says the same thing. <laughs> I bet Lloyd got a big kick out of that one. Yeah, he did get a lot of enjoyment at my expense when he was alive. Lynn, you know Lloyd adored Shelby. I bet he's up there right now showing her around, fixing her speeding tickets. <laughs> oh, Shelby was always crazy about Lloyd. She worshipped the quicksand he walked on. <laughs> and I bet when, he got, when she got up there, he was happy to see a familiar face. Because he was a Louisiana politician, and we don't know many people that went to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Weezer, you know I love you more than my luggage. <laughs> This is for color TV. Thank you. <laughs> well, now that you two have made up, we better let this woman go. She's got to pull herself together. She can't be a pillar of strength with eye makeup running down her neck. You go on out there, Ms. Malin. We'll be just fine. I'm sorry. I made everybody cry. I shouldn't have gone on like I did. Don't be silly. <laughs> Laughter through tears is my favorite emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's about time I had an emotional outburst. Maybe I'll start having them at home more often. <laughs> Tom will be so pleased. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I came here today, Truvy. Shelby would have had a good time. I'm sure she did. Mm. Malin, please tell your family, especially Drum, that they'd been in my prayers. Yes, Anel, I pray. <laughs> There, I've said it. Are you satisfied? I have suspected this all along. <laughs> well, just don't go trying to get me to come out to your church to one of those tent revivals with all those Bible beaters doing God only knows what. They'd probably make me eat a live chicken. <laughs> Not on your first visit. <laughs> Very good, Anel. Spoken like a true smart ass. <laughs> Lynn, Owen wanted me to tell you you're in his thoughts. I didn't know you and Owen yeah, were. he's coming over on Monday to take me to Shelby's service. That girl will do anything to get us together. <laughs> I'd better go. Now, Melan, you promise you call if you need anything, you hear? And if her line's busy, you call me. Call me? I got call waiting, just got it. I will. <laughs> I'll do 
that. Ms. Malin, I don't know if this is the time or the place, but I wanted to tell you that Sammy and I decided that if this is a girl, we want to name her Shelby, since she's the reason we met in the first place, if you don't mind. Mine, Shelby would love that. I'm tickled pink. Pink? Yeah. What do you name it if it's a boy? Shelby, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it should be. Life goes on. Oh, my Lynn. I know it hurts. But it'll get better. And if you want to come and take a whack at something, come over over here and hit on me. <laughs> I won't break. <laughs> I may take you up on that. You have no idea how truly wonderful you are. Of course we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs>